Honey. <laughs> are you uh, so today as you can tell from the title i'm going to be showing you how i did the fringe on my son's grass dance regalia <laughs> i did a video showing you how i um redid it i think it was for applique uh i can't even remember i did the video a while ago i'll link it um and quite a few people asked me how i did the fringe on the regalia so here i am so this is the yoke of his regalia and it's actually the second yoke that he's had. The first one was too big so I decided to just redo the yoke and because this one is smaller I was left with extra <laughs> and I'm glad because now I can show you how I made the fringe. So first thing, materials. I used a size 4 yarn here. I wasn't particular about uh, the material or the brand or whatever. Um, this is just a size 4 yarn that I picked up at my local craft store. But if you're curious about different sizes or if sizes are referred to differently based on like where your geographical location is, I'll leave a link to a chart in the description box and that chart will have um, the different sizes and names on there so yeah after you get your yarn um first string that you're going to cut is great big long one and this long string is going to lay against the entire edge of your yoke and your apron so when you cut this out i would not advise cutting it out to the exact length that you need you should cut it out way longer, like leave a nice long tail um, at each end so that uh, it kind of helps you work with the project and apply the fringe to the string, as well as um, just giving you some wiggle room for any kind of mistakes or anything. Once you finish your whole row of fringe and it's time to apply it to the project, that's when you can cut off the tail. So there's that, you cut yourself a long string. Next is to actually cut the fringe. So what I have here, <laughs> this is a whole pile. I don't suggest letting it get messy like this. This is just tangled because it was in a box. Anyway, what I have here is 18 inch, let me check. Yeah, 18 inch long fringe so this doesn't mean that it's going to hang 18 inches off what you're actually going to be doing is folding each piece of fringe in half so this is actually nine inches long and in, with uh, two pieces of fringe produced but that also doesn't mean it's going to hang nine inches off either because <laughs> as you can see some of the uh, fringe is going to be in this knot here. So let me see how long this is real quick. It's about eight inches long. So this knot takes up about one inch of this. So an 18 inch long fringe produces eight inches worth of fringe. And that's important for uh, deciding or like making the regalia fit the wearer's body. What I did is I actually cut out the fringe exactly to size and then put it on the long string. But if you want another alternative, um, just to kind of give yourself some wiggle room or if you want the fringe to be perfectly the right size, as you can tell, mine's kind of uneven at the bottom and I'm okay with that, is you can cut it out a little longer, um, say like, 20 inches long if you are looking for a fringe at this length and then once you finish your row you can trim the bottom kind of like you know cutting hair you just trim it all and make it even at one time you don't have to do it either way whichever way that you prefer there you go uh one little trick that um i would suggest for cutting out the yarn fringe is unfortunately i didn't do it i actually went and measured each fringe one by one, stupid move. 
Anyway, you can take some cardboard and cut the cardboard to size. Um, so for an 18 inch long fringe, the cardboard would be nine inches wide. Then you would wrap the yarn around it and then cut it on one side. Um, I'm not gonna be showing you how to do that today, but I do use that method in my fancy shawl video. So if you're interested in seeing me do that with ribbon and you have no idea what I'm talking about with that method, go and watch that video and you can see how it's done there. So what I have is eight pieces of uh, yarn in each little bundle here. Um, and with eight pieces, that produces 16 fringes in each bundle. And that is completely up to you how many strings you wanna be in each bundle. If I could go back in time, I would probably do fewer because this produces a pretty thick fringe and he doesn't appreciate that very much uh, in the hot summer sun. <laughs> so depending on the thickness, um, you'll probably want to play around and see how many pieces that you want in there. But just for the sake of consistency with this, I had eight in each bundle. So I'm going to flip the camera to a different angle and I will show you how I attach the bundles to the long string. Okay, so now would be a good time to sort of point out the fact that these can easily slide off. And when they do slide off, they're no longer tied in any kind of knot. So just wanna point that out. <laughs> so again, I have eight pieces of yarn here. And the first thing I wanna do is make sure that the ends of the yarn are matching up so that we can have everything nice and even here. Now I'm going to fold this entire bundle in half and kind of keep it wrapped around my finger right in the middle of that halfway point. And then once I find the halfway point, I'm going to, you see how I have it like held on my hand here? I'm just gonna grab that halfway point and pull it up so that I can create a little space here. I'm also keeping it pressed in between my fingers like so in between my thumb and the pointer and the pointer in the middle because if I let go this halfway point might kind of end up towards you know either side so keeping it like that and then for the tail of the bundle I'm gonna just sort of stick it in between my middle finger and my ring finger and that's just technique just a little trick it's optional you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to Next is I'm going to grab my, my big string. It might be kind of tough to do the very first one, but once you have a few lined up, it'll be easier, but you're not going to really do it any different, whether it's the first bundle or if it's the last. Actually, I'm going to turn this this way. I would rather work in this direction, but if you would prefer to work in the other direction, by all means. See, each side looks different. There seems to be like one bundle look here and then two bundle looks here. So if you're working from the side with two, you would put your loop under. But since we're working from this side that just shows like the one bundle, um, I'm actually going to put this in the front of the string. And just to, I don't know, make this easier, here's another little tip. Go ahead and put the end of the string in between your ring finger and your pinky finger and it holds the project nice and taut for you <laughs> and then with your loop on one side of the string and your tail on the other side of the string hopefully you can see that i'm just gonna stick my fingers through this loop and grab the tail and then pull the tail through the loop. So what it did is it kind of trapped this string in between them. And then um, you can release your fingers 
and then pull it tight. So now you're kind of left with this, I don't know, overly looking thing here. <laughs> so what you can do is kind of push this down towards where you want it to be. And then also if it's kind of, you know, on the string funky, you can just turn it, place it where you want it to be there. Once you got it where you want it to go, then you can work all of the yarn to pull this knot a little tighter. And then, here we go. Now while you're working on the project, these might turn just because you're, <laughs> you're doing craft work. So if your line of bundles is sort of looking crazy like that, it's not a permanent issue. You can just turn them and they'll be straight again. So once you have your full row of bundles done, um, and what, what I had to do is just keep sort of measuring and measuring, <laughs> you know, until I had what I needed, you need to apply it to the yoke and the apron. So first thing that I want to point out is just a quick tip and that is if you're working with an apron or a yoke like this where it has fine points and it isn't just you know like round or something you have to keep in mind that the bundles um, need to be placed in such a way that keeps that shape so for instance here he has two points here um, so just keep that in mind when you're placing the bundles where they got to go. I would start at a place where say you have like an opening, say it like his, and then work your way around from there. Now this is kind of a thick project, so who's to say if you're able to actually put it under your sewing machine? Um, if you do put it under your sewing machine, I would advise you to do a nice wide zigzag stitch. And that's because if you were to do a straight stitch, then it might not actually catch enough yarn in order to actually hold the bundles to the project. So what I did was I actually hand stitched it. I did two sort of like not vertical or horizontal, but like diagonal. I did diagonal stitches and I did two of them for each bundle. Um, you can do it that way or you can do just um, horizontal stitches, but I would never again suggest a vertical stitch because that might not grab enough of the bundles to actually hold them to the material. All right, and that is, that's it. Um, I hope this was helpful. And I hope that anybody who asks about the fringe sees this. And I also hope that I wasn't too late getting to you. So that's how I did the fringe on my son's grass regalia. I do want to say, um, whatever kind of fringe that you do on like a grass regalia or fancy shawl or whatever, I would highly suggest either hand washing it or spot cleaning it or getting a garment bag. They make them in all kinds of sizes. This bag I use for my jingle dress, that's why it's so big. There's um, all different kinds of sizes that you can get. Uh, of course, wash on delicates. And if you're using yarn, never ever iron. Do not iron these to this because that's just gonna flatten it and, and ruin the shape. So, um, yeah. Oh, and real quickly, as you can see, I put a ribbon on there and all I did was just fold a ribbon in half and on the folded edge I just stitched it to one of the strings in the bundle. Simple as that. Anyway, I hope that was helpful or entertaining or whatever you want it to be and I'll see you on the next one. Bama Peak Wobman.